Ah, ah, hello. Glad you could uh, sort of come because I'm in my new home. Got a few cards on the uh, mantelpiece there. But by the time you view this programme, it will be after Christmas, January or February with luck. Yes, we haven't had Christmas yet. I've still got to do my uh, Christmas cards. So, um, happy Christmas if that is not too uh, late. And New Year. Anyway, look, cameras. I was just looking at the OM5, which OM systems, that's the words I should say now, let me have this camera um, early last year. I'm going to say last year. I'm still in 2023, but you're going to see this in 2024, aren't you? Anyway, back to the point. Um, I've used this camera on several productions out of box without any additional gear. I think that's very important for anyone buying this camera for the first time to see what can be done. But several of you have been anxious to know what it is like with my favourite lens, perhaps the 12 to 100. I think this is a classic. And I think I can say Olympus now, by the way, because this was launched in the Olympus era, but is very much, of course, connected with the OM system. And so many of you out there want me to take this lens off, don't you, the 12 to 45, and replace it with this. Take the cap off the bottom first, though, might help. Right. So if we now put this uh, lens on, find the red dots, OK. And with a bit of luck, and it's taking a bit of time. Ah, got there in the end. There we are. So how is this going to fare for future productions? Well, if you're interested, keep watching, because I'm now going to go out there, perhaps on a better day than today, and take a few new shots with this combination. That is, just to recap, the 12 to 100 Pro lens now fitted onto the OM5 OM system camera. So this is where Olympus meets OM system. Let's see how it does, shall we? My immediate concern about using the 12 to 100 Pro lens on the OM5 soon evaporated. The kit lens is the 12 to 45 Pro, its weight and size complementing the camera perfectly. I also found its optical quality superb, but some photographers may feel restricted by its 3 times plus zoom ratio. The 12 to 100 is bulkier and heavier, which could compromise the ergonomics of the camera's design. Although the overall weight did shift a bit towards the lens, it wasn't so noticeable as I had feared. The OM5 has its own image stabilizer, but the 12 to 45 Pro lens does not. That was never a problem, but I was keen to test the stabilization of the 12 to 100 with the OM5, as both have stabilizers, allowing amazing and unheard of stability when hand holding a long shutter speed. Christmas was approaching, and at Caterham on the Hill, a prominent cedar tree, the town's logo, is illuminated at night by fairy lights, so it became the first field test. The best viewpoint was to frame the image with the illuminated tree, and then experiment with different shutter speeds to blur the vehicles. It had stopped raining, but the road was still wet, and that helped the composition. I started gingerly at a fifteenth of a second, moving up to a half. Handheld, remember? No additional support other than two stout legs, which are not good enough for public exhibition. Quite a bit of work required in post-production, but here are the camera details. Moving to the London Museum of Steam and Water, I cast caution to the wind and tried a one-second shutter speed. 
no additional post-production sharpening in Adobe Lightroom or Photoshop. I had visited the museum for my Secret London series, but includes some shots here complemented by Stravinsky's Symphony in Three Movements. With my musical training, I can orally interpret the scene without reducing the music to mere wallpaper. Hello, you find me at Park Ham. That is up on the North Downs in Surrey, not far from the village of uh, Cholton. If I seem a little out of breath, that is because I've just walked up a steep hill, down the bottom of which, you might just hear it in the background, is the M25 motorway. Anyway, I'm currently testing the 12 to 100 Pro lens on the OM5. It's not the kit lens. It's a much more expensive, heavier lens. I was initially worried about the ergonomics, about too much weight going towards the lens for hand holding I'm talking about, but that those concerns have now evaporated. So I'm going to show you some pictures around here and elsewhere. Hope you enjoy the show. Can't show you the camera at the moment because it's recording this video. It's very good at doing that as well. So I hope you are enjoying the show. The acid test was to take the OM5 and the 12 100 Pro lens on a long walk. So I marched the 10 miles from Red Hill to Caterham, which involved climbing the steep escarpment of the North Downs. I was not conscious of lugging around a heavier camera, even though I am a long serving bus pass holder. However, I am no couch potato and have used walking as a regular activity ever since being a teenager. Even when I worked in London during the 60s and 70s, I went for a walk in my lunch hour, acquiring a local knowledge put to good use in some of my shows, even though I succumbed occasionally to the temptation of patisserie Valerie. A more demanding photo test was the painted ceiling in the old Royal Naval College at Greenwich, a World Heritage Site granted in 1995. It was started in 1707 by James Thornhill and conserved between 2016 and 2019. With the added benefit of a more powerful telephoto zoom, I was able to get closer to detail. However, 
as hand holding at telephoto increases the risk of camera shake the system underwent a serious test because of low light for safety and being a coward i increased the iso to 400 and 800 but here now here is a shot at 200 ISO at the full telephoto end of the 12 to 100, which would have been 200 in 35mm film. I also visited the chapel, which offered similar challenges. It suffered a disastrous fire in 1779, but it rose from the ashes to become one of the finest 18th century interiors. As it was Christmas, I decided to finish the day by videoing the Christmas lights in Regent Street. Well, it nearly finished me off. The crowds were so horrendous to the point I wondered why so many people were there and what they were doing. Fortunately, I could secrete myself between a permanent flower display, avoiding the risk of being knocked over, which I am sure would happen without the protection of a few daisies and pansies. Nevertheless, as soon as I got the shots, with the help of my detailed knowledge of London streets acquired in my lunch hours, I hurried away and even managed to get a seat on train back home. Amazing how influential my white hair can be. Mm -hmm.